So let's open this up again. And um, watch me as I forget how to control this. And let's do a couple of things. Uh, let's create a time node back here. And let's simply drag it in here, here, and save. Now, as you can probably already notice from here, but I'll show you on the scene view, as going crazy fast. And everything looks out of whack and it's is too fast. So what we need to do is add a a time offset. So let's add another vector one and call it time offset. Now I have found with a lot of patience that 0 0.01 is what I I like, but you can decide for yourself. So let's click on both these lines and delete them, and create a multiply node and drag both of them in and then drag them into the offset. And now if we save and look at our scene, you can see it's moving a lot slower but it's moving for sure and I would argue that looks a lot more ocean like okay now that we've got that done let's open it back up so we've got ourselves the normal map and we've got ourselves colors now recently they added a vector um, displacement to shader graph so that means is what we can do is we can take our one of our normal maps or both of them if we wanted and use that to make vector displacement. Now, from my experience, I found that it looks a lot nicer and a lot more wave like if we just take the larger of the two textures, but it is again up to you. So what we need to do is we need to create a node and call it position world object. So this will get our position of our vertex according to our object object. And let's create a split node because what we need from this is the, the uh, X and Z values. We don't want the Y value um, we want to get that from our our normal map. So let's create a vector, not a vector one, a vector th three that we can plug this into and then plug this into position. Now if we leave this the way it is, we will find that nothing has changed and that's because we weren't the height of the object was flat anyway. So it's not like we were changing anything. So let's go back in here. Make this full screen again for you guys. And let's get to adding in our normal map as the height. So it's quite easy. Uh, you take the red and green portions and you add them together you create your uh, another add uh, function you add the result of the red and green and add it to the blue now what we're doing here is I'm turning it into a, essentially a height map so I'm adding them all together and then I'm going to divide them by a number to turn it into a a gray number a number between um, 0 1 and 0 and that is proportionate to our normal map so let's create another node and divide now I found that we should create a variable here call it vector 1 and I'm gonna call it 
I ah no, we can do this in code uh, in the shader graph. Sorry. So let's drag this in, and I found that six is a good number. Now I know we've got three variables, but I found that the number between zero and one that it outputs is way too rough for just a a smooth ocean like what I'm doing now. So I divide it by two again, or six in total. So let's take the output and add it round there. Let's see if I can make this look in any way pretty. Or is, is this just going to look horrible? Yeah, I think I'm just going to have to deal with this. Or can I move this out? There we go. A little bit of OCD. So what this means is now that our vectors and if you look in here and here you can see it on the preview are being moved up and down so we save the shader and come out we can see here that it is indeed moving up and down if I change it to wireframe you can see that it is okay so that is our water working semi right um, what we want to do now is make it look a little bit more liquidy so there's a couple of ways of doing that I found that if we make the smoothness and metallic valuables publicly accessible then depending on your scene you can move them up and down and it makes it look a lot more like water so let's move this out let's create a new vector one what smoothness let's take the default value of the of this smoothness there. Let's make another vector one and call it metallic. And since the default is zero anyway, let's just bring it out. Save our asset or our shader. Let's go here and let's go take a look now. You notice when you up it, it becomes slightly more metallic. So if we up it, the smoothness a lot to about 7.6, metallic a little bit as well. I think that looks quite a lot like water from here. Okay, so next thing to do is I'm going to add reflections to the water. Now, to do this, we need to have a number of things. So let's first make the main camera our main camera in the tag. Now let's make an empty game object. Um, we are going to use reflection probes. So that is what I'm going to call this. And now that that's in, let's make sure this is equal to zero, zero, zero. Just center it for the beginning. Now, in case you don't know what a reflection probe is, it is essentially six cameras printing out a cube map for the, for whatever to make use of it and use it for reflections. Now you can use this in a number of ways and the way I'm going to be using it today will mean that you can probably only have one reflection probe in your scene. I'll explain this a little bit when I'm creating the shader. So for the moment the only thing you need to worry about is type. We don't want it baked. We want to have it real time. 
and we want to have it running every frame. So you can already see that looks kind of cool with the water underneath, but you'll see what we'd be doing in a second. So let's center this off again and save. So back in our shader, we'll need to open it up and we'll need to create a node and we'll use a reflection probe node. Now this will get the nearest node in the scene. Now how we're going to do reflections is that we're going to have the node at the exact opposite height of our camera. So we will be scripting a little bit in C sharp to make this happen. But that means is that if that node is further away from you than a, a different from the water than a different node, then the reflections would change midway through. So unless you're planning on having uh, the water out of sight when there's a different reflection node closer, then you may have an issue with the water displaying different reflections if this isn't the only node in your uh, probe, sorry, in your project. So we've got it out. We just want to have it here. And I'm going to have it into a divide function because we don't want the reflection to be too overpowering. So let's add another float or vector one. Um, we can call it the water reflect, reflect. And I'm gonna have that at two, I believe. Yeah, let's go for two. So that means I'm just gonna divide the, I'll drag it out here the image by two, which just decreases the brightness overall. So once you have that, let's drag it into the emission, um, the emission slot and save that. And that is everything you need to do in this shader. This is your shader basically complete. So let's exit out. And if we were to put in a, a cube or something, you should be able to see that is in fact there. So I believe that is a shadow. If we move the camera forward, anyway. So what we need to do is now we need to write a C sharp script and I'm going to call it follow cam probe. You can name it wherever you want. You're probably a lot better at naming than me. And it's going to be quite simple what we're going to do in this script. Let me open up Visual Studio here and delete start. But to begin with, we're going to need a reflection probe and we can call it probe. Next, Next we need to figure out where the probe is and I'm just going to do void awake and then probe equals get component reflection probe. So we'll have this script attached to the, the reflection probe. Now update, what we want is the probe's position to be opposite in height to the main camera, but the same everywhere else. So it's going to be quite simple. It's just camera dot main dot transform dot position dot x camera dot main dot transform dot position 
dot y times minus one. So we have it the exact opposite in terms of the y position. So main transform position dot z. When that's done, we'll need the probe to to render. So probe dot render probe. And there you go. Uh, that is the script finished. We can click out. And we just need to drag that on top of the reflection probe, follow cam probe. Now let's see how this looks. Now, since I've just realized we don't have any objects in the scene, let's create an object that's Let me undo that. Let's create a, a cube. We'll have it above and hopefully now that everything is working, we will get reflections. There you go. You can already see it in the game camera. But if we move us forward, That is our X, so Z. You can see that the reflection is there. And it really helps with the vertex manipulation so that you can see the sh both the shadow and the reflection moving. It, it really helps to sell the effect. So there we are. We have a washer shader with vertex manipulation and a reflection. Now, again, I, I can't stress this enough with this shader. It will work only really if you've got the, the single reflection probe or if you've got multiple that you're away from the water so that it doesn't mess up the reflections. Um, also bear in mind that if you do scale the plane that it's working on, everything scales with it. So what you would have to do is you need to go into the shader and scale down the big wave, small wave, all that kind of stuff and make it work well for this size of plane or whatever mesh that you're using it on. Let's shrink this back down. So there we are. A simple water shade for, well, not so simple water shader done in shader graph with a little bit of help from C sharp. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully I'll be doing more like this and subscribe to my channel to see more and like the video to help other people find it and also share it if you're, you feel so inclined to do so. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.